Next person who has a win. We may know this person. We may, I don't know, Moose, you may know him. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you had conversations with him this year. Have you had conversations with him this year? No? Um, I, know, I know he texted me this morning because he couldn't upload his video. So um, mm. I talked to him today. So he tried to call me and I was like, uh, sir, church, hello. He's right. preaching. What you want me to do? But, um, right. but I, you may have had a conversation. You may have shook his hand. Um, we kind of know this guy. Uh, shout out to our next big win of 2020, uh, Toby. Hey. Toby. Hey. Yo, first off, he created not only a whole movement for during the Black Lives uh, Matter situation, but then uh, made it almost uh, acceptable to, like, have hands. Like, he literally did a song, Try what? Jesus, <laughs> that yeah. was a hit, yeah. um, and everybody was loving it. It didn't matter what culture you were from. You were singing, Try Jesus, Don't Try Me. Every single day, people bought the shirt. I bought the shirt. I got it in this mint color that he's been doing lately. Um, yeah. It is crazy to see Toby's growth. I did a post of like zero to 500K. And like, I want to say middle or like beginning of, of COVID, right? And now we're talking about I need to really... Uh, update that to zero to a million wow. because he's almost there. He's been, uh, he has songs with uh, Black Dot, D Smoke, uh, Five Nine, uh, Royce Five Nine, um, Endless, Endless, Paul Wall. Like to see Toby's growth, yeah, yeah, it it's it's amazing, but. What I really wanted to highlight, not only his growth, but how him as an artist and him as a, a, a brand really took what was happening in the world, transformed his, own, his whole house into a new video set, and still stayed consistent with putting out very creative uh, visuals for his songs, right, for his raps. It didn't miss any beat as far as the schedule wise. He still created amazing work, amazing art and to, to people who look at music and his visuals as art and created what he is known as the pandemic experience. Yeah. He literally did a whole virtual conference, a uh, virtual concert. During the pandemic, did a whole set. It was amazing, the whole rollout. And he was on Steve Harvey, the BET Awards. It's just the, the fact that while other, once again, while other people were struggling to figure out how do I make money when normally I go tour? Because he was starting to become a, a touring act, right? He would mm -hmm. go on tour yeah. Every, and they were sold out each and every single solitary time. And this time, he, was, he stuck at home and do it, yeah. right? But he took that, created his own set, created, like, literally painted his, his one of the rooms in his crib, right? Shout out to the new crib. We don't think we ain't noticed. That's not new, sir. That's new. We see it, right? right? right we see it. Right, right. Um, but how he took advantage of being at home, sitting down, thinking of new ways to be creative and having the top celebrities share out his things, um, being in different conf uh, virtual conferences. I know United Masters just did one, I think, this past week where he was uh, featured on um, so many different articles about what he's been doing. Moose, what do you think about how Tobe's been moving in these digital streets lately? 
Yeah, he's done a phenomenal job, man. One of the things that I love about what Toby's done, number one, is that he stayed in his lane all throughout, right? And and even as the opportunities presented themselves, even as the platform has grown and and the audiences have began to get mixed up, right? Because you'll see him from time to time posting, you know, different people who are listening to his music from all ages, all backgrounds, all ethnicities, I'm sure different religions, and he's still stuck to the core of his message. So I think that's one of my favorite things about what he's done. I remember I went to see him in New York when he toured in New York before. It was like probably early this year, like super early or late last year. Yeah. A phenomenal show, a great experience. But again, you look, and, and this is one of the unique ones that I have, is seeing a show live and then watching the videos, you can still sense the energy. Yeah. Another thing that I thought was phenomenal is he did the virtual conference, mm-hmm. you know, and that was a couple months back as well. So while he couldn't go tour and that was a primary thing, he also put on that live experience for people that you can sit in the living room and he went all out as if it was uh, literally, again, a live show, you know, rented out the set. Now, in that case, he wasn't necessarily at home. It looked like he rented out uh, some uh, stage. But what I love about it is down to the details. Even the stage was mint. Yep. The microphone stands were mint. The yep. microphones themselves were mint. They were wearing mint. Everything was mint, right? And, and what he called mint heaven, and it was dope. I, I really enjoyed that experience. And then you still see that he hasn't lost a sense of who he is throughout that entire process. Like, despite of the success, he got his children on stage running out with him and joking around with his children. There was a part where they had a little uh, kind of like technical difficulty, and then they just started making jokes with Nell and, and, and everyone, you know, around just to kind of show like, yo, regardless of what happened, I'm still me, we're still we. And we're operating as a unit. So I think there's a lot of many lessons that you can take, you know, from what Toby has done throughout the pandemic prior to and how he's consistently continued to grow his brand. And I think, lastly, that's probably the the biggest inspiration of it all. Like, the man is probably the definition of consistent at this point. Like, he has not stopped since since I've met him four years ago or something like that, it's literally been, you know, for the most part, every single Sunday with the exception of certain seasons when they're touring or whatnot. But he has so many lessons embedded into his journey and what, he, uh, what he's done and accomplished. So, yeah, that's been dope. Yeah. And so we got a clip of uh, clearly Tobe talking and we will have Tobe on the podcast to uh, talk himself. But until then. I had to learn how to do everything because I came into an industry with no no foreknowledge of how to like maneuver through here and I still and I but I couldn't make no excuses for what I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted to do and I couldn't make excuses for why, why I wasn't getting done. So I had to become resourceful and learn how to design my own stuff and write raps and make songs and know what instruments I wanted to use and know how I wanted stuff to look and learn camera angles and how to direct stuff. But it's only because of necessity. So I I, I, I would say that my vision was born out of lack. Mm. My vision was born out of lack. Yeah, that's a bar. That is a whole bar. Like That's a bar. And the crazy thing about it is like you think of we sometimes wish we had everything. Like we want the machine behind us to push our products, our services, give us all the resources. Um and, and and not only talking just about like music artists, but just like any kind of business, any kind of brand, we want that backing that sometimes we just don't get. And we really have to work with what we have. We really have to see the different tools and the resources we have right in the crib sometimes. And especially in this in this year, we really had to look around and be like, how yeah. do we make this work? Like, 
shoot, shout out to us. We figured out how to make this work with legit. being at the crib. Yo, right? Legit. Oh my God. So <laughs> I and the funny thing is, I literally have, and I didn't discuss it, so I'm not gonna put it um on the podcast. But if you want to, uh tweet us and we'll we'll tweet the video. But I have about like, I wanna say whether it was a year or two ago when in Michigan we they they built out the podcast room right in the church and Moose put on the headphones and had the mic first time and he was like oh that sounds so yeah. clear oh oh my god I was like Moose podcast coming soon he's like yeah yeah I'm gonna do a podcast <laughs> he was so hyped and ideally, it would have been amazing to do the podcast in the podcast room, all the equipment, everything. But we had to adjust. And the great thing about Tobe is that he did the same. He looked around his crib. Yeah, we're going to be here for a minute. Let's transform the crib. Let's paint it up. Let's uh, bring everybody six feet, clearly, you know. Um, and let's still make the music. He went live a few times. You saw the distance within each artist and everything. Um, and it was just refreshing to see how somebody like Tobe can make it work with nothing. You know, and for those who don't know Tobe's story, he really just started off with his iPhone. Yeah. You literally saw the nose hairs and the boogers uh, that he had mm -hmm. in his videos while he was he, while he was rapping. Right, it started with one of the social media challenges, and he made it work. And he used the resources that he had because he was independent. And we always refer to music a lot is because music artists is literally the blueprint to personal branding majority of the times. Yeah. Because you're starting with nothing or very little capital, right? You have to kind of with, especially with digital products, you have to learn how to sell air sometimes because right. they sell songs. That's nothing physical anymore. They're not selling CDs anymore, right? They have to figure out, you know, events they have concerts and things like that they also sell merch so we always kind of refer to you know these music artists because some people are like nikki and moose are just hip-hop heads yes we are but that's not why we do this well somewhat that's it does the only reason why. It's, it's not yeah. the only yeah. reason why but yeah. um there is a true connection because just like a uh let's say any influencer that you know on social media, they were home too. And a lot of people were absent on social media because they didn't know how to adjust. They didn't know what yeah. they were doing. They were used to the studio life. They were used to all the lights, had other people doing stuff for them. They didn't know how to just show up for their audience with not getting their hair done, not the usual uh, people around them, not anybody who's working the camera, right? And Tobe figured it all out beforehand, before the pandemic, that it was easy to do during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. There's a level of scrappiness that comes with the music artists. Because, you know, you think about what you're selling. To your point, you're selling a song, but you're selling an experience. You're selling a vision. You're selling an emotion. So I, I think that's a great lesson, too, to pull away from 2020 and into 2021. For those of you who are working on brands and businesses, really ask yourself, like, outside of the physical thing that I'm presenting to people, whatever that's a product or a service, what am I really selling? Right? right. What kind of business are you in? I remember even, like, in the hospitality industry, while our means of exchange was staffing events... I was really in the people business, right? Mm. Like it was, it was more so around how we treated people, how we catered to people, how we made people feel uh, to at least want to be a part of our staff that determined what type of effort they were going to present during the event. So right. I think that was one of the things early on that I was able to catch on to 
uh, during my scrappiness phase to say, I'm not just in the staffing industry. I'm not in the hospitality industry. I'm in the people business. Mm. And that, that kind of shifted my mindset to how I should approach day to day. So to you out there listening, I'm going to say the same thing or shout out to everybody watching on YouTube. Yo, what type of business are you in? Search beyond that first level of, oh yeah, I'm in, I'm consulting, I'm a coach, I'm a speaker, I'm a, a musician, an artist, you know, like go deeper and really figure out what am I really presenting to people? What kind of business am I in? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's good. So shout out, shout out to Tobe. You are, the wins that you have done through this year, we have to give you your flowers. Clap it up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's accumulating Clap a it lot, up. For sure.